May Flom here doing a five ways post for Chamel and I'm focusing on using stencils on your layouts. So in five minutes, I'm going to share with you my tips and tricks and ideas. Here's a layout that you see in the article where I've used mist to create a background design. To do this, you'll want to place your stencil on the paper, but you'll also want some scrap paper that you can place at the edges so that you don't get overspray. Because if I was to do, and I'll use a different design, if I was to do this starburst design and I misted this, and remember, one spray, maybe two, let it dry, then add another mist or two if you want. You do not want to use too much mist on a stencil because then it will just get underneath the stencil design and make a big blobby mess because obviously all that liquid is still on your stencil. It doesn't absorb into the stencil. But here you can see that, that line, that hard line in the overspray. To avoid this, you're just going to put scrap paper down, mist whatever or ink or paint whatever the stencil design is, and then you can move these pieces of paper around the page as you repeat whatever the design may be. Idea number two, use a pen to outline the stencil and then go back in and color it. Here you can see that I used this stencil and I drew around it with a black pen. Then after I was done with that, I used various pens and colors to colorize this particular stencil. Idea number three, use your stencils with either mist or paint to edge or accent, add little, a little edging to the layout. And here you can see I actually have two different stencil designs. One is the splatter one and the other one you can see here is a doily design that I've added just on the edges as some finishing accents. Idea four and five are both shown on this layout, which I'm actually just finishing up. Idea four, use your stencil on a sticker, on a punch, on a die cut, or on some other piece of paper or item that you're going to attach to your layout. Now the really key thing whenever you're working with stencils is to hold it incredibly still. If you're worried about holding it still or you don't think you're gonna be able to hold it still enough, my suggestion is to get out some some scotch tape and tape around the edges to a non-stick surface such as this craft mat. The tape isn't going to stick. It's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to stick. All it's going to do is act like a third hand for you and help you hold that down so that you can stencil your paper. And as I said before, you could do this once it's punched out or you could do a full sheet of paper or part of a paper and then punch it out. Idea five is to take a stencil, and here's one you can see. I have some scotch tape masking off, and it's on the back side of the stencil, masking things off, and only one heart is open. And the reason for that is if I just want to do that one heart, I can do so by just maintaining an even pressure and applying ink or mist or anything else that I would like. Paint would work too. And stenciling just one small part of the design onto my layout. Another way to approach this would be to take a stencil that was a more general design and do it as a double stencil where you create or die cut or make your own shape, place it on top of a stencil so now I'm kind of double stenciling here and I'll stick with the blue ink since I just have it right here. And I'm working in a circular motion. The main thing as always is to maintain a very still stencil. You don't want to wiggle that stencil around. And then when I lift it up, now I've got a stenciled heart that also happens to be patterned. Let me leave you with my top five tips. Number one, make sure your stencil is always firmly secured down, whether it's with your hand, a piece of scotch tape, again, onto a nonstick surface, or anything else. Number two, if you're using liquids such as mists or inks, 
that are reactive with water when they become re-wet, you're going to need to wash off your stencil. Otherwise, if it's acrylic paint, you can see a little bit of acrylic paint on this stencil. It's okay if it's a little dirty. Tip number three, when using mist especially, do not be afraid to get in here with scrap paper and create mist guards so that you don't over color your stencil. This is particularly helpful if you were working with a layout where you wanted to stencil or mist and you didn't want things to get on a photo, you could cover the photo with the scrap paper before getting in there with the stencil and your products. Number four, don't over mist. If we are doing a misting on a stencil, you're gonna want to be very light, be at least six inches away from that stencil and mist one time. See what it's like, and of course you wouldn't wanna move that if you were gonna do it again, but mist once, see what it looks like. If you're happy, great. If you're not, come back again and remember a minimum of six inches away, mist one more time. And keep repeating this, allowing your mist to soak into that paper so that you don't oversaturate and wind up with a big goopy mess. Tip number five, remember that there are no limitations and just because stencils tend to be a little more of an artsy, messy kind of a thing, it doesn't mean they have to be messy on your project. You can make a big colorful stencil mess, then take this and die cut it out or otherwise use a portion of it so that it looks nice and neat and clean on your scrapbook layout. The parting thought I will leave you with is that if you're worried about making a mess on your scrapbook layout, do not fear. You can always do it onto an element or separate piece of paper and not onto your finished page if you're not feeling quite that bold. I hope you've enjoyed this video and my projects for Chamel.com. This is Mae Flom and I wish you very happy crafting.